class, today we're going to talk about communities. And communities are places where people live, work, and play. Our town of O'Neill is a rural community. Mrs. Pistolka, has O'Neill always been the same as it is now? Well, no. What was it like back then? Good question. I bet all of you know someone who has lived here and seen many changes to O'Neill. Do you think you students could interview some of the people and find out? Yeah! I know! I know! I know! I know! I know! Great! Hi, my name is Emma. And my name is Chloe. We are going to tell you about the size of O'Neill back then until now. It was a very busy place back then there were about 4,500 people in O'Neill but now we have around 3,800. There were a few roads that were paved but mostly most were dirt roads. Hey Chloe, did you know that we were a one stoplight town and now we have three stoplights? Wow, times have sure changed. Our hospital was not as big as it is Today, it was just one building. What? Really? That is cool. I know, right? The stores downtown were not as big either, but there was, was a lot more local shopping that you could do instead of shopping out of town like many people do today. Hey, Chloe, can you believe that north of the water tower was all pasture? Today, O'Neill is spread out in all directions. No, I can't believe that. O'Neill has really grown over the years. And that is our news on the size of O'Neill for you today. Hi, I'm Aurora. And I'm Mallory. And I'm Sydney. And, and we are going to talk about businesses in O'Neill then and now. Many businesses that were here in the past are no longer around, but the buildings are still downtown. We had a bakery called the m and Bakery. That was located where the China Dragon is now. I heard M&M Bakery was the place to go after school for a sweet treat. There used to be a movie theater called the Royal Theater, which is now Stadium Sports. Just down from Tia Zia was the Five and Dime Store. They sold candy for, for three and five cents. I bet the candy was good. There used to be a lot more gas stations in O'Neill, too. Queen Hardware was downtown from cell where Cellular One is today. Buzzy's Jalopy had a real jalopy on his roof and it really good food. It was along Highway 281 where, where the Roberts milk truck is parked today. First National Bank was located in the Kincaid Museum. Gambles had three floors to shop and was located where the Great Western Bank is now. Montgomery Ward was here in O'Neill the Viero store is in that spot now. McLake's Drive-In was a popular place to eat. It's now a counseling center. The Hershey used to be a, be a drug store a long time ago. Then it changed to Daylight Donuts. Hey, don't forget about my grandpa's jewelry store, Macintosh Jewelry. It's been around forever. There were a lot of old places that are no longer around, but we still have businesses that make O'Neill a great place to live. Hi, my name is Paige. And I'm Caleb. We are doing a project about O'Neill's past and present. Our job is to tell you about businesses that have relocated. Coast to Coast used to be in the old Torpens Rodeo Market building. It moved to the Caskey Furniture Building and is now called Ogden Hardware. <coughs> S&S were the farm store downtown that moved out east of town and later became Bongos. The Ford dealership moved from downtown to out west of town. It is now called Prairie Hills Ford. John Deal also moved from downtown to out west of town. It has changed its name from Cottles to Plain Equipment. Grocery stores have moved too. Rodeo Market built a new building. Superfoods moved from what is now Grotter's new store out to out by Pizza Hut. Alco is called TG and Y. Shopco is called Gibson's and Zenpomida. Both buildings stayed just as stone names changed. 
The Pinnacle Bank and the Great Western Bank expanded their buildings to the west side. Christian Bach Dental moved from Main Street to a new building behind the Pinnacle Bank. Those, Those are, are just some, some of the businesses that have, have moved, moved over time in O'Neill. Hi, I'm Emily. And I'm Damien. We're going to talk about the restaurants in O'Neill then and now. Damien, did you know there were no fast food restaurants like McDonald's? Really? I bet there, there were different restaurants back then. Johnson's Drive and later known as McLeg's was a very popular place to eat. You could drive up and the waitress would come out to your car to take your order. Don't forget about Buzzy's Jalopy. That was a place to go af to after ball games. Ice cream sure sounds good right, right now. There were several cafes in town. Helen's Cafe was located where the Barney Stone is now. The Legion Club was a place to go dancing. And the Townhouse Motel served steaks in their restaurant. Bojangles was another place to, to eat. I think they served pizza. Yep. Later it became Godfather's Pizza and then Valentino's. Now it's Dairy Queen. Eby's and Seeger's were a couple of cafes that are no longer here. Their buildings were torn down and replaced by other businesses like Cubby's. Bill's was another cafe that had really good food. All the stock of the food is making me hungry. Let's go find a place to eat. Hi, my name is Levi. I'm Cohen. We're going to be talking about how hotels in O'Neill have changed over time. We got really good information from the people we interviewed. Did you know the Golden Hotel was made completely out of brick and steel? The only wood that was used was for the doors. Many visitors stayed there and still do today. The Sunset Motel was also a place for visitors to stay back then. They can stay there today too because it is now the Elms Motel located out by Shopco. Hey Colin, did you know that where the Holiday Inn Express to, is today used to be the Capri Motel? Really? We also had the Townhouse Motel that was the only motel with a pool, a restaurant, and a gift shop. I heard the food was really good. Now now it's the innkeeper, which is mostly apartments. The Elko Motel was here in the past and is still used today. It is down by the softball fields. So if, so if you're ever in O'Neill and need a place to stay, now you know where to go. My name is Tyler. And I'm Zachary. We, we are, are going, going to be talking about how schools in our community have changed. The 1938 building used to be the elementary and the high school together. And before that, the public school was in front of the 38 building and the 1913 building. When the high school moved to where it is today, kids had to walk to the 38 building every day for lunch. Speaking of schools changing, did you know that St. Mary's used to be a boarding school? Yes, and it was called St. Mary's Academy. Unfortunately, it burned down twice in 1862 and 1965, but they did rebuild each time. So our schools have changed buildings and grown in grown bigger in size. School time ex has expanded too. Kindergartners go to, go to school all day long instead of half a day. Also, back then there were no computers at all. Wow, we use computers and iPads every day in school now. Chalk, chalk boards and chalk dust were the things from the past. I like our smart boards today way better. No matter if it is then or now, we are glad that we have such good schools in O'Neill. Hi, I'm Tucker. And I'm Tate. We have learned some things about how farming in O'Neill has changed over time. O'Neill's machinery has gotten bigger over time. Even the storage space for crops has gotten bigger. Combines and tractors now have GPS systems to help guide the farmers in the field. They didn't have that kind of technology back then. Don't forget that makes the farm equipment more expensive too, and farmers wouldn't have had a cozy cap to sit in. Everything was open back then. 
There used to be more implement stores in O'Neill, like shell hammers and Harry's. Farming wasn't as quick as it is today. Now it is easier and quicker to plant crops with better equipment and supplies. A long time ago, there were more small farms. Today, we have less farms, but they are bigger. O'Neill is a rural community because we have so many businesses that are based on agriculture, too. Wow, O'Neill's farming has changed a lot over the years. This is Carter. And this is Brady, telling you what people did for fun in O'Neill's and Ann Al. People played lots of sports and card games. They also went to the pool and skated at the skating rink. Basketball was the sport to play in their free time. Hey, we still do those things today, except roller skating. That place has closed. McLeg's Drive-In was a popular place to play video games. I wonder if they rode their bikes around town like we do now. Yeah, they did. And they would ride them downtown to the movie theater. It was called the, Ro the Royal Theater. It was fun to play many games, outside games, like Annie over and Cops and Robbers. Don't forget about about going bowling. We can still do those things today. The drive-in theater just north of town was pretty popular. Lots of people went there to watch movies during the summer. If you were, if you were hot, you could go to the pool to cool off. Some people play golf just for fun like my dad and I do now. This, this has been Brady and Carter letting you know what people did for fun in O'Neill. I'm Kyler. And Landon. We've received a lot of advice from the people we interviewed about living in O'Neill. For the most part, many people talked about getting an education and what a wonderful place O'Neill is to live. Yeah, I think O'Neill is a great place too. Respecting others was another important piece of advice from the people we mentioned. Let's show a few clips of advice from the people we interviewed. Here's a top dog country radio, Mr. Gil Posey. Well, I would say this is a nice town to grow up in. It's a very friendly town, and, and uh, everybody gets along with everybody, and it's, it's just a wonderful place to live for everybody. Miss Bula gave some good advice, too. Because we like to have our kids and our young kids stay in this town, and, and it's, it's hard to see them go. Melvin Razika owned Coin Hardware, and this is what he told us. It's go to school, steady good, and uh, yeah, learn everything you can. Nicole said logic knew just what to say to get us involved in our community. To, to really uh, find out everything that your community has to offer, um, get involved, help volunteer, whether it's maybe helping pick up um, trash or planting a tree in, in one of our um, really cool parks that we have here, or um, talking to our elected leaders, you know, letting them know um, what you like today, but then also what can be, um, what we, you would like to see. Here are some clips from Gordy and Kathy Givens and Marge Ziska. Stay involved in your school, stay involved in your church. And stay involved in sports. And have lots of friends. And study art. Learn to work and learn to work hard, and um, you will be successful. We're all proud to grow up in O'Neill. I think that's it.